As a follow-up from last week when we optimized Windows 10 for gaming, this week we're going to be doing the same thing to Windows 11, so stay tuned. So, like I said, continuing on from last week when I showed you what settings I change in Windows 10 for gaming, today we're going to be doing the same thing to Windows 11. And as I said in the last video, once we get Windows 10 and 11 both optimized for gaming, I'm going to put them head to head in the next video and see if Windows 10 is still the best choice for gaming in 2023. But first, we got to pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Isus Partition Master. Isus Partition Master is an all-in-one free partition utility that will allow you to create, delete, resize, move, copy, extend, merge, or even wipe and format partitions. Isus will also allow you to convert MBR partitions to GPT without formatting the partition. And if that wasn't already enough, Isus Partition Master will also allow you to check file systems for errors and repair those errors. Isus Partition Master has a ton of features that I highly recommend checking out for yourself. So make sure you click on the link in the description below and get your copy of Isus Partition Master today. Also, check out some of the other cool software that Isus has to offer. Now, back to the video. Now, this video is going to be kind of repetitive from the last video because many of the settings that I change in Windows 10, I also change in Windows 11 when I'm setting up a gaming system. However, in Windows 11, you have to go about changing those settings in different ways. So, I'll show you not only how to do this in Windows 11, but there's also a few other settings that I would recommend changing in Windows 11 for a gaming system. So then, without wasting any more time, let's jump on the system and let's get this thing ready to game. All right, so here we are in Windows 11, and just like in the last video, the first step that I wanna take in this one is checking your monitor's refresh rate. So to do that in Windows 11, you just right click on the desktop, go down to display settings. From the display settings, you have to scroll down until you see advanced display right here. And then from there, you should see your refresh rate right here. And currently mine's set to 60. And it's gonna be putting a lot of performance on the table. So we're gonna go ahead and jack that up to as high as it'll go. And your screen's gonna go black for a minute while it's testing that out. Then you can go ahead and hit keep changes. And you should be running at the higher refresh rate. Now, like I said in the last video, changing your refresh rate isn't going to affect your game's performance at all. Your game is still going to run at exactly the same frame rate that it would have ran with the lower refresh rate. However, your perception of it is going to be different. And a lot of these settings, or at least some of these settings, are for our own usability, not just the performance of the system. So make sure that if you have a high refresh rate monitor, you're taking advantage of that refresh rate. I mean... You did pay for it after all. You might as well use it. Let's get back to it. Okay, so the next setting, we're gonna go ahead and close our settings right here. And we're gonna go into control panel. And for that, you just click on the start menu and type in control panel. You should see it on the list and then open it up just like that. And then from here, we wanna go into system and security. And then we wanna go into power options. And from power options, as you can see, I'm currently set to balanced. However, I would recommend setting this to high performance right here. And that should be the only setting that you have to make. However, if you do do it this way, if we click on the start menu, we go into settings, you'll notice that if you go down into system here and you go into power, you'll notice that right here, it won't let you change your power mode if the high performance power plan is used. So if you wanna change this from within settings instead of within control panel, then what you're gonna to have to do is leave it on balanced like it is by default, and then go into settings, go back into system, go into power, and then from here, you can actually change your power mode right here from the Windows 11 settings. And from there, you can just go to best performance. However, me, I personally still like to do it from control panel because, well, it's the way I've always done it before. So that's the way I recommend doing it now. And now moving on to the next one, we can go ahead and close control panel. And the next program we need to open is task scheduler. So go ahead and open your start menu and just type in task and you should find task scheduler there. And then from there, we wanna go into our task library here. We wanna go into Microsoft. And then from there, we wanna go into Windows. And then from Windows, we want to scroll down until we find Windows Defender. So if we scroll down here, and this should all be alphabetical, then we can find Windows Defender right here. And then as you can see, all of these different tasks right here, we wanna open all of these individually. However, the most important one is the scheduled scan right here. But what you do is you open these up, 
you go into conditions and then check this first box that says start the task if the computer is idle and then go ahead and hit OK and then kind of just go through the list and do this for all four of these right here. It might take a second to get through so we'll go ahead and get all of these and then once we get to the end we can hit OK. And this should calm down Windows Defender quite a bit. I've noticed lately that Windows Defender is using a lot of hard drive usage. And by doing this right here, it will make Windows Defender not function unless your system is sitting at idle. It won't do any scans in the background while you're using the system. And that should help your disk usage and in turn help your gaming performance. So since we're in Task Scheduler, there's a few other things that I would recommend also. So for this one, we're going to scroll all the way up to the top and we're going to look for application experience. And once we find that, it's going to be right here. And then all of these different settings right here, or all of these different scheduled tasks right here, I would disable all of these. And to dis disable them, you just highlight them and then push disable right here. And then just go through the list and do the same thing with all of them. And then once you get down to the bottom, oh, and you might end up finding in a situation like this where it says the account you're operating from doesn't have permission to disable this task. And if that happens, Fine, just hit delete instead and just delete the task and then disable all the rest of them. Or you can always delete all of these as well. Essentially, all we're trying to do is this is just Windows telemetry that we're trying to disable right here. So there's no need for any of these tasks right here. That's why I disable them all. So the next one we're going to go down to is Customer Experience Improvement Program. And once we click on that, do exactly the same thing with these two. You just go ahead and hit disable and disable all of these. Now, I like to disable these rather than deleting them, unless you have no other choice than delete them, because I'm afraid that Windows Update might add these tasks back if you delete them completely. However, if you disable them, then I think we have a better chance of Windows Update respecting that and not re-enabling them, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I've had pretty good luck doing it this way. Okay, so once we get done with that, we can go ahead and close our task scheduler. And the next thing we wanna open up is our services. So go ahead and click start and type in services here. And then from the services menu, we wanna scroll through and there's a few services that I recommend disabling. The first one is connected user experience and telemetry. And this should all be alphabetical. So you just essentially scroll down until you find right here, connected user experience and telemetry. And as you can see, it's currently running. So we're gonna double click we're going to go ahead and hit disable, go ahead and push stop. And then at that point, we can hit OK and move on to the next one. And then the next one is system main. Now, this one's kind of a controversial one. Some people like to disable it and some people don't. I disable it all the time. I think it's completely worthless. Now, what system main does is it preloads applications when you first boot your computer and Windows kind of tries to guess which applications you're going to run. So it preloads those in order to make the running of those applications seems snappier when you first execute them. However, it only works with spinning disks. If you have an SSD, system main doesn't preload applications from an SSD. So if you're running your system with a solid state drive like you should be, then system main isn't actually doing anything. So I see no reason to keep it running. So let's get back to it. And then to disable it, like before, just go ahead and hit disable, push stop. And then at that point you can hit OK. And then the next one that I would go down to is Windows Search. Now Windows Search, this is another one that you may want to think about before you disable. Because if you want to actually index your files for searching, then obviously you need Windows Search enabled. Also, if you're using Windows file history as a backup, then it won't work if you disable the search service. So keep that in mind. I disable it because I don't want the extra cycles running in the background while it's indexing files. I mean. This is a gaming system. I don't care about search. And again, to disable it, go ahead and change automatic to disabled, push stop, and then go ahead and hit OK. And then the last one is all of these Xbox services down at the bottom right here. Now, these are all manually triggered. However, I have seen them running before. So you just go ahead and double click on them. Go ahead and put it on disabled and hit OK. And then do that with all four of these right here. Now, keep in mind, this is another one of those things to where if you're using Xbox services, then you might not want to disable these because it will make your Xbox services not function. But since I'm not, I don't need them. I turn them all off. So 
Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and close our services menu. And then the next one is different applications that you should have installed on a gaming system. Now, obviously you need to have whatever game engine that you're actually using, like in this case, Steam right here. And this is where most of my games come from. However, any other different game libraries that you want to install, you should obviously have those installed as well. But this is a no brainer right here. Everybody knows that you need to have at least Steam installed. However, there's some other ones that I would recommend as well. And those are the first one being MSI Afterburner. This one works on both NVIDIA and ATI graphics cards to allow you to tweak some of the, the core and memory settings on it to make your card run a little bit faster. And I've had really good luck with this program. I love this program right here. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna show you how to overclock your GPU in this video here, but I did show you how to do that in the Windows 10 video last week. So if you wanna see that, go ahead and check that video out. But the next program that I would recommend getting is this one right here, NV Clean Install. This is a great program for people that have NVIDIA GPUs to be able to install a slimmer version of your NVIDIA graphics drivers. And I'll go ahead and go over that in a minute. And then the last program I would recommend is this one right here. This is the Heaven Benchmark. Now, I don't recommend getting it for benchmarking. I actually recommend getting it to use in conjunction with MSI Afterburner to overclock your GPU because you can run Heaven in the background to put a load on your GPU so you can run it boosted at its highest speed while you're overclocking it. And it makes overclocking a little bit easier. But these three programs right here are definitely a necessity. Now, I did say I wanna show you how to use NV Clean Install, so we're gonna do that real quick. So I'm gonna minimize this and I'm gonna open up my downloads folder. NV Clean Install should be there. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this, hit yes. And then essentially, I would run this every once in a while just to check to make sure that you have the most updated drivers. And as you can see, I do. So I don't need to run this right now, but I'm gonna anyway. So go ahead and click on install best driver for my hardware, or you can also select a driver version manually if you'd like to use an older driver version. Like for instance, if you're having a problem with the newest driver and you wanna use the last one, then you can do it that way too. But for us right now, I'm just gonna do install best driver for my hardware and then go ahead and click next. Now, the next is gonna ask you which parts of this driver do you wanna install? Now, obviously this is gonna be different for everybody, but this top section right here is what we're most looking at. Typically I do, obviously, the display driver. I do the physics S driver, and I also do the HD audio over HDMI. Those are the only three that I typically install, but if you wanted to install these other components, you could also go through and just select the ones that you wanna install. Also, if you look through the bottom right here, if you're into the GeForce experience, you can go through and you can select the different things from within G GeForce Experience that you want to install as well. However, I typically always skip that. So once you select what you want here, you go ahead and hit next and it's gonna download the installer, but it's gonna take a second to download, so I'm gonna skip ahead until it's done. Okay, so once you get to this page right here, this is kinda of gonna give you some installation tweaks. Now, some of the ones that I typically recommend is perform a clean install right here. And then I typically skip all the other ones, the telemetry and advertising. I haven't really seen much difference in checking that one right there, but you can if you want. But one other setting that I typically do use is you gotta click on show expert tweaks down here and then go down to enabled message signaled interrupts. And this one I have seen a difference in, so I would recommend checking that. And then once you finish that, you go ahead and hit next. And at this point, you can push the install button and it'll install the drivers. And it'll typically look like normal, but it'll be a slimmed down version of the NVIDIA driver install. So once you get done with that, you can go ahead and close this and we'll move on to the next step. And for that is some tweaks within the NVIDIA GPU settings itself. Now, obviously, if you have an ATI graphics card, then this isn't gonna help you much. But if you're using an NVIDIA card, I would recommend changing these settings right here. So go into Manage 3D Settings and then scroll down here. There's two settings that we wanna change. The first one is going to be Power Management Mode. Now, obviously, right now, it's set to normal. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna hit Prefer Maximum Performance. And then from there, we're gonna scroll down a little bit more and we wanna go into Texture Filtering Quality. And right now, it's set to Quality and I wanna set it to High Performance. And then once you change those two settings, go ahead and hit the Apply button and it's gonna take a second to apply, and once it's done, you can go ahead and close it. Now, with those two settings within the NVIDIA settings, I, I've never seen them affect the visual quality of the game at all. It looks exactly the same, but it's usually good for a couple FPS, so might as well give free FPS, right? 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disable our notifications because we don't want any bothersome notifications coming in when we're trying to play a game. So from there, we're gonna open up settings and then we're gonna go into system and then from system, we're gonna go into notifications. Now the first one you wanna do is right here where it says notifications, go ahead and uncheck these right here and then you can flip the switch off right there. And then from there, make sure you scroll down to the bottom where it says additional settings. And then from here, you wanna uncheck all three of these two and essentially all all these are are the spam that Windows gives you all the time, like bugging you to sign into a Microsoft account or getting suggestions on tips for Windows. You know, we don't want none of that. So we'll go ahead and uncheck all of it. And then since we're in settings, we're gonna go ahead and play around with some of our gaming settings right here. And for these, we wanna go into the Xbox game bar and I typically always turn that off, but this is gonna be something that's, if you use it, then you use it, go ahead. But I usually turn it off and then also, we wanna go back into gaming here and we wanna go into captures. And this one right here I think is pretty important, but right here where it says record what happened, go ahead and uncheck that. Because essentially what this is doing is it's gonna be using CPU cycles in the background to record your games. And you can then you can use the Xbox game bar in order to save those recordings. But if you're not interested in that, then go ahead and uncheck that. And honestly, there's much better ways to do screen capture than to use the built-in one from Windows. What I typically use is, right here, OBS Studio, that we're currently using while we're filming this video right here. But this is the program that I typically recommend for doing screen captures, but you use whichever one you want. I recommend disabling it within settings right here. And then from the gaming tab again, we wanna go into game mode. Now this one's controversial, and I can honestly say that I haven't tested it to be able to justify my recommendation to turn this off. So. One of these days, I think I may actually do a video testing game mode and see if I should be recommending turning it off or not. But for now, I typically recommend turning it off. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see a video of testing out game mode. Now, I've watched tons of videos on it and I've read about it in the past and essentially what game mode does is it tries to slim down the services in the background when Windows is running in order to give more resources to games. And that sounds great. However, I have seen situations to where it actually slows games down. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend disabling it. But like I said, maybe I should test it for myself and see how, how I do on it. I might stop recommending turning it off. So let me know in the comments below if that's a video you'd like to watch. Okay, so now the next setting, we're gonna go ahead and close this real quick, and we're gonna play around with our startup apps. So the first place we wanna go to is we wanna right click, go into Task Manager here, and then from Task Manager, we wanna click on Startup, and Startup is gonna be this little gauge right here. I'm not sure why it's a gauge, but that's the way they did it. And then from here, we wanna go through and just find the different startup apps that we don't want, like Microsoft Teams. No, I don't want that. And why Edge is opening 17 different services? I have no idea, but we can disable it right here. And you essentially go through and just disable all of the things that you don't want running in the background. And then once you're finished, you can go ahead and close Task Manager. And the next one, we're gonna go ahead and click on the Start button. We're gonna go back into Settings again, and we're gonna uninstall some apps here. So go ahead and click on Apps, and then click on Installed Apps right here. And now this is everything that you currently have installed on your computer. So essentially what you would do is you would go through, find something you don't want, like right here, Isus to do PC Trans, the reason this this is on this computer is from a video that I did like six months ago. So there's no reason for this to be on here. So we're gonna go ahead and right click here and we're gonna click on uninstall and uninstall there. And then it'll go ahead and run the uninstaller for that app. And then what I would recommend doing is going through and just uninstalling all the apps that you simply don't need that could be taking resources that you could be using in other ways. All right, so once you go through and remove all the things that you wanna remove, you can go ahead and close your settings right here. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and push the start button and you wanna search for core isolation right here. And from core isolation, now as you can see, mine's already turned off. And the reason why mine's turned off is because apparently I have a driver that doesn't support it. And that driver is a webcam that I have sitting behind my monitor that I simply use just for a microphone while I'm doing screen recording. But you know, it allows memory integrity to be off. However, this is one that I'd recommend turning off anyway because it can affect gaming performance. Essentially what this does is it separates unsigned code from the Windows kernel. And 
you know, that can have a processor overhead and it can hurt gaming performance. So I recommend turning that off. And this is also a setting that you should go back and change in Windows 10 as well. This is one that I should have included in last week's video, but I forgot that memory isolation was a thing in Windows 10, you know? So I'm not perfect, sorry. Let's get back to it. Okay, from this point, we can go ahead and close our settings. And then the next setting we wanna do, we're gonna to need to make in control panel. So go ahead and hit start and type in control panel so we can open that up. And then the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna click on uninstall a program. And then from there, we wanna click this key right here where it says turn off features, turn Windows features on or off. And then from there, we wanna scroll down until we find our virtual, virtual machine platform right here and then go ahead and uncheck it and hit okay. And it should uninstall that component from your Windows install. And then once it finishes, you go ahead and hit restart now, but I don't wanna restart now because I'm in the middle of filming a video. So if you wanna restart later, you can go ahead and hit don't restart if you want. And then at this point, you can close control panel. Now, one thing that you'll have to remember is by disabling the virtual machine platform, you won't be able to run Windows subsystem for Linux. However, by disabling that, it does disable some Windows 11 security features that are related to virtualization, and it could help your gaming performance. So give it a try and see how it works on your system. So as you can see, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are fairly similar in regards to how we configure them for gaming. Also, like I said before, one thing I should have talked about in the last video is core isolation for Windows 10. This was added in Windows 10 in version 1709, but in recent versions, it's on by default. So you might wanna check the setting in your Windows 10 system as well, because it's just as detrimental to gaming performance on Windows 10 as it is on Windows 11. So with that said, stay tuned to next week, and we'll put Windows 10 and 11 up against each other and see which one really is better better for gaming. But in the meantime, another thing that you can do to help gaming performance in Windows 10 and 11 is to completely disable Windows telemetry. And I did just that in this video right here, where I show you how to manually disable telemetry in Windows 10 and 11. I like manually disabling telemetry better than using a script, and it's really not that hard. As always, you guys have a great day.